currently, there are tons of options for Android phones. They can either be entry-level phones, mid-range phones, or even premium phones. There are so many options that it can actually be quite overwhelming. And today we have the Apple Find X5 Pro. And yes, that is quite a mouthful. Okay, so let's talk really quick about the specs. Beginning with the screen, we actually have an AMOLED panel which has LTPO technology and lets it have a refresh rate from 1 Hz to actually 120 Hz. There have been other companies which say they can do this and it was actually not true. But this is actually true with the Oppo Find X5 Pro because it has that LTPO technology. It also has an underscreen fingerprint reader, which is not the fastest, but definitely is not the slowest either. It does a pretty decent job. But that's not all. It also has quite a steep resolution without losing those 120 hertz. So just simply flagship level. Now let's talk about the processor and the RAM. It has a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, which we all know by now and just simply offers you a great premium experience. It also has 12 gigs of RAM because why the hell not? Just simply overkill for most people. And all of this is powered by two battery cells which actually give you a total of 5,000 milliamps which is again great in flagship level and that's not all. It has an 80 watt charger which gives you a battery charge from 0 to 50 in only 12 minutes. That is just simply crazy. That means you go to the bathroom when you're back, your phone practically has 50% or more. So flagship level and the charger actually comes in the box. But that's not it. Oppo also put a 50 watt wireless charger on this thing on the back, which means you can actually charge this phone faster than an iPhone 13 Pro Max connected to a regular brick. And at this point, Oppo is just literally flexing because it also has a reverse 10 watt charger. So premium, premium and flagship everywhere. Now let's talk about the cameras. In the back, it has three sensors. The main one is a 50 megapixel. The ultra wide is also 50 megapixels, which is great because taking ultra wide pictures with the detail of a 50 megapixel sensor is just great and makes more sense than actually putting more megapixels on a telephoto that most people aren't even gonna use or gonna use very little because this phone also has a telephoto, but it only has 13 megapixels, which again, I think is a good decision because most people really aren't gonna be using that telephoto that often. And again, that's not it. It also has a special collaboration with Hasselblad, which means you're gonna get access to exclusive filters as well as some Easter eggs, which I actually like quite a bit. Like the shutter sound when you take a picture, which is actually from an old Hasselblad camera. I like that quite a bit. So just small details which actually give you a great experience because the pictures I took on this phone just simply look great. I actually think they can compete with other phones like the Samsung S22 Ultra as well as the iPhone 13 Pro Max. I think the camera is right up there with those phones and in some cases might actually be better. Well, it all depends on what type of pictures you like because this phone also has AI and it's called Mary Silicon, which actually makes the pictures better when you take them. Now let's talk video quality. You can record at a maximum of 4K 60, nothing too crazy like the 8K we see on other phones. And let's just get it out there. 8K is a gimmick on a smartphone. It's not mainstream yet. There's not a lot of things you can do with it. And it actually doesn't really look that well. It's not even mainstream on a DSLR camera like the one I'm using right now. So I definitely think 8K doesn't belong on a smartphone yet. But again, that's not all to it because this phone records great. It has very good video quality and it's mostly because it has a five physical image stabilizer inside the lens. So it doesn't matter how much your hand shakes or if you're in a moving situation, the video quality is gonna be buttery smooth and I really think it looks great. But like any other smartphone, not everything is perfect because yes, the rear cameras are top notch and I would say even above a lot of flagships, but the front camera is a different story. We have a 32 megapixel sensor, which does a very decent job at taking pictures, but when it comes to filming, it's actually a disappointment because it can only film at 1080p, it can't record at 4K, and the stabilization on the front lens is actually terrible. You can tell every single movement, you can feel every single bump along the ride, so it's definitely a no-go for front camera filming. Okay, so everything on this phone is definitely flagship, except for the front camera, which I already ranted about, so I would really like to know. So would you guys really rock this phone for $1,400? I know I would, but I hope you liked the video. If you're new around here, consider subscribing and stay tuned because I will see you pretty soon.